Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be not afraid is the most prolific message in Scripture. Many have counted 365 verses in Scripture that relate to that message. Fear not, or do not fear, or be not afraid. So there's one for every day of the year. So there's a project for you. Go home, look them all up, write them all out on your calendar, and every morning you'll have your devotion taken care of. So this week's Breakthrough Prayer will focus on ways to break through the, pr the fear that holds us back. But just a bit of review first. We're in a series on Breakthrough Prayer, and last week we talked about upsurge Breakthrough Prayer, a prayer that you pray when you find yourself at the end of your own ability, facing a difficulty that causes you to doubt yourself and to doubt that you have what it takes to overcome or to persevere. So rather than giving up, you choose to ask God for a breakthrough, not to remove the difficulty, but to grow you to a place where you can handle it spiritually, to lift you to a place in your spiritual life beyond where you are now, to the rock that is higher than I, as we read in Psalm 61. That's called an upsurge breakthrough prayer, seeking an upsurge in your faith. You can choose the words that best help you remember to pray through difficult circumstances. There are a few other breakthrough prayers that we need to have at the ready as we open ourselves to that kind of faith. There's the let there be light breakthrough prayer, the holy surrender breakthrough prayer, and the pickaxe breakthrough prayer. Pastors Eric and Mark will cover those in upcoming weeks. But first, we have to get past the fear that holds us back. And these days, fear is widespread. Fear keeps us from living our best life, from fulfilling God's calling, from being that person that shows God's love no matter what. In fact, the opposite of faith is fear. So we need do not be afraid breakthrough prayer practices. And these can come to us right out of the Bible from any one of those 365 passages. Today, we're using this one from Isaiah. The people of Israel to whom Isaiah was initially speaking were both literal and spiritual traveling companions, seeking to find their way as they grappled with danger and a shortage of resources, transitions, changes, enemies who threatened them, and disagreements among themselves. Remember, these were people in exile far from anything that was familiar to them. Isaiah's words were a bold reassurance that God would be with them in the fear-filled times, coming to them with the, the provision for what they would need. And fear presents itself in many forms. People generally have a, a fear of fire, a fear of wild animals, of earthquakes, of storms. Uh, there are really only um, two things that we're naturally afraid of. Uh, the fear that we come by naturally does protect us from doing, well, stupid things in the face of danger, right? Some fear is, is a very healthy thing. But we only begin life with two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises are, are the only things that elicit a fear response in newborns. And those are reasonable fears for an infant to have. But as adults, we have fears and phobias that are both reasonable and far beyond reason. Fears that have developed because of our increased ability to reason, so we, we might see the situation in a, in a more educated light, and fears that have resulted from trauma or some negative experience along the way. I personally think everyone should have a fear of heights. <laughs> to me, that's just a reasonable fear 
to have. Um, now, I'm grateful that there are those who work on the towers and tall buildings, um, and I do realize my fear of heights is not altogether reasonable, and I do often try to overcome it with reason. If I have to climb a ladder to change a light bulb, I talk myself through it. You know, you only have to go up two steps. You hold on with one hand. It's a sturdy ladder. You change the, you know, I'm talking to myself the whole time. Um, but when it's really important is, is when I, I have to determine how to, to keep from overreacting when I'm with others. And that's the hard part, when your fear is not altogether reasonable. How much of that fear do you project onto those around you? How does your fear impact others? Because fear can be quite contagious, right? So I think about that when I'm with my 11-year-old granddaughter, especially. She did not acquire the family fear of heights. She scampers up trees and playgrounds with no hesitation. A few weeks ago when we were at the Dells, we visited a water park, one of the big ones, with those big roller coasters that have names like Cyclops and Hades 360. We all agreed in advance that we didn't need to ride any of them. You know, they had been there, done that in other places. So I was feeling pretty confident about the day. But there was one ride that really caught my granddaughter's attention, and she really wanted to try it. Now, my grandson uh, decided that the go-kart tracks would be his thing for the day. You know, they're flat on the ground. He doesn't mind going fast, but they don't lift up into the air. So he was good with that. So it was just my granddaughter and I as he was off doing those things. And um, this ride had a center tower that stood 140 feet tall. And the tower rotated, lifting 12 connected arms each with a seat hanging from it. And as the tower rotated, the arms would swing up and spin around until the whole thing rose up into the air and the seats were swinging around the pole at the top of its 140-foot height. It was called the manticore. She was tall enough, she argued. She was old enough, she argued. She would go by herself, she argued, since her brother preferred the go-karts. So we walked past it several times. I read all of the cautionary information. She didn't have a heart condition, she argued. And I thought, finally, I don't want to hold her back out of my fear. So I texted her father hoping he would hold her back out of his fear. But he didn't respond, and I needed an answer. And so I caved, and I let her go. I, I w had hoped that the operator would put someone with her, but they didn't. So she was all alone in that seat. And as I tried to charge in to rectify that situation, the gates were closed, the ride was starting, so up she went. As the, the tower began to rotate and the arms began to lift, she looked so small sitting there. And then that monstrous thing started taking her up into the air, and I had to turn away. I couldn't watch, but I had to watch because I had to make sure she was safe, even though I couldn't do that from the ground. So I managed to video part of her ride to send to her dad afterward in hopes that I would also have a photo to send of her with a big smile on her face, having survived this thing. Her dad finally responded when it was all over with, um, saying he thought she was very brave. And I told him about my experience, and he said, well, you're very brave too. <laughs> I mean, I, I knew I was nervous about this. I knew I had mixed feelings about it. But I had no idea it would hit me in such a visceral way, the panic that I felt and the fear. I'm grateful for God that is a God that's present even in my ridiculousness so that she didn't have to see my fear. 
Do we know how we would respond in times of real danger? As we observed the 20th anniversary of 9-11 a week ago, I heard the recording again of that phone call between a call center supervisor for United Airlines and Todd Beamer, passenger on uh, Flight 23, whose story became somewhat famous, um, along with a, a few others as they coordinated an attack on the, on the terrorists that were on the plane, aware that it could crash the plane, but they, so they knew they couldn't save themselves but they thought they might be able to thwart the attempt to use their plane as a weapon against others. Now, after my experience with the manticore, it's doubtful I could maintain that kind of cool. I still wonder if I would maybe have the courage to follow through on a plan, to be able to pray some kind of do not be afraid breakthrough prayer that would allow me to push through the fear. I would like to think so. Of course, part of Beamer's experience was born of practice. He was a product of Christian schools, graduated from Wheaton College. Prayer was a go-to for him in all situations. Todd and the operator talked for more than 15 minutes. He was calm. He asked the operator to pray with him, and together they prayed the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm, and then he uttered those famous words, let's roll. If we can develop that kind of confidence in prayer, it may serve to give us the courage to step beyond our comfort zone, to try things we haven't tried before, to be a blessing for others in ways we haven't been able to be before, believing that God will guide our steps. I hope none of us ever has to experience the kind of test of faith that faced, faced those on Flight 93 but perhaps the confidence of God's presence might help us to step out in courageous new ways. I hyperventilated in my high school speech class the first time I had to stand up in front of the class to deliver a speech. But I no longer have a fear of public speaking. I often have a fear that I won't know what to say and that there won't be any words coming out. But as I pray to have the, world, the words, I, I feel a confidence that carries me through. That confidence is often what keeps me going. And I go back to that truth in my life when other things don't make sense. Remember when you hyperventilated? Remember now that you can preach in front of people? There must be a God, right? I would never have experienced that had I not stepped into the pulpit. The scariest of all places, I have to say, public speaking and heights in one place. You, you may think that fear isn't really an issue in your life, but fear can take on any number of disguises. Believing you can do nothing right, procrastinating, refusing to try something new, being suspicious of others or even prejudiced against them being overly defensive, bullying people. These are all forms of fear that can be triggered by your own inner critical voice or the negative culture that we find ourselves in. So what is it that you need to try to experience the confidence that God is with you? It might be something as simple as offering to pray with someone. That can be a really scary thing because it opens you to that sense of vulnerability. Or may, it might be the willingness to join the choir or to teach Sunday school. It might be the need to speak up when you witness an injustice. What if we could blast that fear away by simply embracing this simple practice that whenever we notice ourselves experiencing anxiety or self-criticism, or presented with a new opportunity, we might remind ourselves that our great God is with us with a be not afraid breakthrough prayer. Sue Nelson Kibbe, the author of Ultimate Reliance, the book we're using as a resource for this series, writes, 
the actual feelings of fear may never fully subside. But you'll discover that in the midst of fear is the place where the awe and wonder of God can also break forth and take shape. That's the way it is anytime you notice God being present with you through prayer. There's a name for places such as this. The Celtic Christians call it thin places, those rare locales where the distance between heaven and earth collapses. But unless we take our fears and our desires to God and open ourselves to God's presence, even in a panicked cry to keep her safe, God. We'll never know the joy of such places where God promises to meet us. May the words of Scripture lead you to your own be not afraid, breakthrough prayer for all the times when you find fear or anxiety breaking your confidence in our God to act. That in you, God and others, will find the courage of faith. Amen.